it was like, oh my gosh, this is the way it would be if we had holograms. The iconic scene where Princess Leia beams out as a hologram kind of set the stage for, can we at some point produce this sort of holographic technology? Dr. Paul DeBevic and his team at the ICT are working to redefine the scientific possibilities of holograms to make them usable in everyday life. The Institute for Creative Technologies is basically here to create the next generation of virtual reality. We were interested in creating a 3D teleconferencing system, so what we wanted to show was a human face. We first of all had to figure out a way to digitize somebody in 3D as they're actually speaking. We set up a high-speed video projector to put some patterns of light on the face to get 3D shape. And then we had a webcam that gets your image. So if you have the shape of somebody's face as they talk and a webcam image, that gives you essentially a 3D model of the person's face that we can put on the display. We're looking at the 3D display. This is a three-dimensional image of our friend Cynthia, and we're playing it back. This cutting-edge imagery is the brainchild of a simple experiment. I got interested in thinking of a way to shoot a time slice technique of an object, like maybe like a splash of milk that would be cool to freeze and then move around it as it's uh, frozen. Using a rotating mirror and a cup of milk, Debevic set out to freeze time in three dimensions. We aimed the camera down onto the spinning mirror. It reflected into a cylindrical mirror. The milk was down here. I threw a nut into it, it made a splash, and the high-speed video whipped around the viewpoint of the milk splashing. It seemed clear that if we replaced that camera with a video projector, it would generate views of an object to all different directions around it in real time that you could actually see. To play back 3D holographic images, Debevic and his team utilize an advanced projection system. Essentially, there is a spinning display surface, which is what I'm holding right here, turning around 15 times per second. That's gonna give you 30 passes per second of this display surface spinning around. That's exactly the right kind of reflection you wanna get for the video projector images that are going onto it. During playback, dual projectors work together, beaming twin holographic images onto the rotating surface. Split the color spectrum right down the middle into oranges and to the cyans. That allows us to show the human face almost in full color. You can get flesh tones, you can get blue eyes, you can get the whites of the eyes, you can get white teeth. The effect is that there is this floating, autostereoscopic, three-dimensional hologram-like image and it's just like Cynthia's face was really there. That's awesome. Debevic and his team are now puzzling out a way to project live holographic messages into thin air without the rotating reflective surface. I'm standing in our light stage X device. The way that this works is that we have cameras which take pictures of people from different angles, and we also have complete control over the lighting. Eventually, the holograms we show will respond to light in the environment the same way that the real person would. And it might look like not just a video signal from somewhere else shown three-dimensionally, but it might really appear to be an image of that person in the same lighting that you are in that same room. Breakthroughs in holographic technology promise to overhaul our concept of high-def or 3D TV. So why don't we have holographic movies? As computer power becomes cheaper and more readily available, we will have holographic TV in your living room. The holographic image of Princess Leia pleading for help was just nothing but a teaser, the beginning of this huge wave of technology that we see in Star Wars.